It's like, oh, it's horrible. But it, but it works really, really good. Um, and it's everywhere. It's, it's everywhere, yeah. Um, the last one I want to talk about is red raspberry leaf. Okay. Red raspberry leaf is great for females. It's great for men, too. We just use it for different things because we have different parts, right? Okay, so red raspberry leaf, female, uh, is great for any type of uterine complaints. It's especially good during the last trimester of pregnancy. Um, it helps prepare the uterus and tone the uterus for delivery. Um, it also has a hemostatic function for uterine hemorrhage. Uh, it's astringent in nature, so much to the point that the tannic acids and the astringents in it are good for diarrhea. It will actually cleanse out that mucus, uh, which is where the bacteria hide in your intestines, and, and clear that out, help you get uh, rid of traveler's diarrhea or even you know, uh, regular you know, bug-caused diarrhea. It's a great herb. It's also a really good nutritive. It has a lot of nutrients, uh, calcium, vitamin C, vitamin A, carotenoids. Uh, it's, it's good, good quality plant, and it tastes good. Raspberry leaf tea actually tastes good. If you haven't tasted red raspberry leaf tea, you're missing out. It's great, okay? And it works really good in conjunction with a lot of other stuff. It's very mild. You can't uh, OD on it. It has some diuretic function, so it's going to help cleanse the kidneys as well. But really what we're after is those tannic acids and their astringency to help cleanse out the intestine or with women uh, issues to really help that. We recommend it almost specifically for any type of protracted menses, meaning your period is messed up. Uh, doesn't come at normal times or is only for a day or is really heavy or whatever, it really has a normalizing function on that. So um, it's really great. And it works really quickly too. I mean, usually within a week, they're, they're seeing benefits. So that's 10 of the most common backyard herbs. One I want to tell you about that I don't have a picture of is um, that it's everywhere and people don't realize that it's such a good thing to have around is, uh, oh, thinking of the Canadian name, Portulaca. Olaricea. That's the Latin name, and the Canadians call it Portulaca. It is purslane, P-U-R-S-L-A-N-E. The cool thing about purslane is it grows in people's cracks, and it's actually really <laughs> cracks of their sidewalk. I hope it doesn't grow in your crack. That's weird. You need to take a shower if it's growing there. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Uh, so purslane's great. A lot of people take the larger branches and actually pickle it. Um, it's, it's, it's really good. I like it in salads. It has a really slight sour lemony taste to it. And it is one of the highest concentrations in the plant kingdom, like flaxseed, of omega-3s and omega-6s. So, so it, it's really healthy to eat. And it's a, it, people consider it a weed, so you might as well pick it and eat it. Yeah, yeah, it's delicious. I put it in my salads and smoothies so all the time. I love it. Yeah, yeah. I like to. Sometimes the stems can be a little, little uh, rough, and so I'll, I'll pick it and just like get the leaves off and throw that in my salad, or if I'm sautéing greens up, or if put it in a smoothie or whatever. And it does. It has a really nice type of little bit of sour lemony taste to it. It's really good stuff, um, and it grows everywhere around here. It grows absolutely everywhere. Yeah. Okay, so you're gonna tell us how to store. That, like, yes. Yeah. Okay. Especially so. Especially the gummy ball thing. The gummy ball thing. Yeah. The leaf. Uh, the the leaf. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, the cool thing about that is all the constituents are water soluble. So if you just dry the plant, you're good, and you'll still be able to extract it out. Um, <laughs> they're not oil um, uh, soluble. It's water soluble. So if you just dry the leaves or, or plant, you've got it. Okay. Here's the thing about drying plant material. Aerial parts like the leaves and flowers are very delicate, especially when dried, okay? So the larger portion you can dry and save, the better and the, the longer it'll keep potent, okay? The smaller you crush that up, the, the quicker it, it loses its qualities, okay? So when I dry dandelion leaf, I actually try to dry the whole leaves and I don't crush it up until I'm about to use it. Okay, same thing with mullein, same thing with any of the leaves, same thing with uh, yarrow. I'll dry that whole thing and I'll just scrape that off and then I leave it in there and I don't really crush it up, crush it up until I'm about to make a tea out of it and, and keep its potency pretty good. Roots, you want to dry out and same thing, you don't necessarily want to break them up until you're going to use them. However, um, try breaking up a dry burdock root. You're going to need a chainsaw, okay? So sometimes it's, you know, depending on the plant and the plant portion, you want to chop it up before you fully dry it out. 
Burdock happens to be one of those. Uh, any good big sized solid root, <laughs> you're going to want to make sure you've got it to the size of what you're going to want to use it as before it dries out because it's going to get really hard. Um, dandelion, not too much. Dandelion crushes up pretty easy when it's dry. Look for healthy plants. And if you see a lot of, a lot of bugs or, or something that just doesn't look right, don't pick it. And I know this sounds kind of weird, but like I said, I'm, I'm that hairless hippie guy. Ask the plant. You know, I mean, if, if, it's, if it's the only one around, you probably shouldn't pick it. You know, it's surviving, it's doing well, and maybe if you leave it alone, you'll have more next time. You know, so only pick from healthy uh, communities and, and make sure that the plant isn't sick or has anything else going on um, because you also don't want to ingest that, right? You don't want to dry aphids and accidentally make aphid tea, right? So, um, I don't know, maybe you do. <laughs> I, I wouldn't, but make sure it's a healthy plant and that there's enough of them around so you're not decimating a burgeoning population of something. Drying is the easiest way. Um, just, just drying them or making a tincture out of, out of the fresh material right away. Uh, storing them, it's best to keep them out of the sunlight and out of air. So if you have something that you can make airtight and keep it in the dark away from sunlight, it's going to keep a lot longer and be ready for you to use. It should look very similar to when it was fresh. A great field guide for this area is by Peterson. That's, that's the company. And they have a field guide to Western medicinal herbs. It doesn't have everything, but it's got probably 85, 90% of everything here. So that's a good field guide.